Well, uh, we just had a very enjoyable event here, got, uh, spending some time with some uh, kids here, uh, highlighting another measure that the Conservative Party is putting forward to help make life more affordable by making EI, maternity and parental benefits tax free. Uh, that's just one more example of how our party is focused on making life more affordable. Alors j'ai uh, le temps pour uh, quelques questions sur So I have time for only a few questions this morning because I have to prepare for the debate tonight. Now it's no real surprise that Justin Trudeau won't be there with the week that he's had. It's not really a shock because we learned this week that the RCMP is doing an investigation about a possible obstruction of justice. Now we had a great morning with the children here and uh, I want to highlight a measure, a conservative measure to make life uh, more affordable, which is that maternity and parental benefits for new parents will be tax-free. Uh, Mr. Scheer, uh, your candidate Ms. Wilson said she thought it was shocking that Canada has no abortion legislation. If she wins here in this riding as an MP in your government, what are you going to do if she brings in legislation that would affect abortion rights in any way? So nothing on this issue has changed for our party. Uh, we have always made it very clear that uh, we will not support reopening uh, the issue. The Conservative government will not reopen this issue. And as Prime Minister, I will oppose, I will vote against any measure that does attempt to do that. We are going to be focused on things that unite Canadians, unite our own uh, team. Uh, it's not a surprise that the Liberals are once again trying to push this thing out. The only thing, the only people who are continually trying to reopen in this debate or, or, or fear monger on this issue are Liberals. And I'm going to make a prediction. They're going to continue to do this for 39 days uh, because they are desperate to change the scandal, the, the channel on their scandals and corruption. And Miss Bennett today has put forward a message that is completely false. She is making things up in her attack and uh, it's not a surprise because her leader has been lying about issues for some time now. So once again, nothing has changed on this. The Liberals are desperate to hide from their scandal and corruption. We have a Prime Minister who has lost the moral authority to govern, who's being looked into by the RCMP because of allegations of possible obstruction of justice charges. Canadians are very concerned with that and we are going to make the case to Canadians for the next 39 days that the Liberals have lost the moral authority to govern and it's time for a Conservative government that will be ethical and honest. Did you get assurances from Ms. Wilson that she will not introduce a bill? Well, nothing has changed for our party on this issue. We know and we've always been clear that a Conservative government will oppose any measure that intends to reopen this debate. I have been clear on this. I will vote against any measure that attempts to reopen that debate. And it's only the Liberals who are trying to to uh, raise concerns among Canadians. It's always the Liberals who are constantly raising this issue. And I'm going to make a prediction. Over the next 39 days, the Liberals will continue to do that sort of thing because their leader has been lying. Their leader is uh, obstructing the RCMP on a potential investigation. So he's really just trying to change the channel. And he's been embroiled in scandal after scandal. Now, on medical assistance uh, in Dine, well, as I said, this is a very important ruling that will change the lives of many Canadians. And as we said, when this bill was brought forward by the Liberal government, this is an issue with many different aspects to it, so we will continue to uh, review uh, the ruling and we will have something officially to say on that in the coming days. So uh, that is uh, right in line with what we expected it to, to cost. Uh, we think it's very important. When new moms and dads take EI mat leave or parental leave, they forego up to 45% of their salary. That's a huge sacrifice in critical early months when all the costs are going up. And believe me, with five kids, I, I, there's, there's a lot uh, to pay for when you've got car seats, you've got uh, uh, diapers, clothes, 
the odd uh, dry cleaning and uh, steam cleaning of carpets. Uh, so uh, this measure is about putting money back in the pockets of new moms and dads right when expenses are going up for a new family. This is part of our uh, fully costed uh, fiscal framework plan that we will be highlighting and we will be explaining to Canadians exactly how we will be getting back to balanced budgets over five years while we continually find new ways to put money back in their pockets. The U.S. government is talking about banning uh, flavored e-cigarettes and vaping. What's your reaction to that and would you consider doing that here? Uh, you know, our, our government took measures uh, to ensure that uh, uh, tobacco products were properly regulated and uh, to, to make it um, uh, more difficult or less enticing for young children to, or young teens to uh, take up uh, tobacco habits. So we're going to continue to support measures that do exactly that. I haven't seen uh, specifically the new regulations that the U.S. government has put in, uh, but we'll certainly take a look at that. Can you just answer those both in French? Sorry. Oui, uh, le premier, ok. Uh, oui, uh, alors les, 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 les coûts sont dans, yes. le, de, dans, le, so dans la ligne qu'on a pris. The hier, cost is along the lines essential. that we predicted. We believe it's critical for the government to make new parents' lives uh, more affordable. And there are lots of big costs for new parents, and I believe that this measure will ensure that more money stays in their pockets and won't be taxed by, go by the government. And we will be introducing a plan in this campaign where we're going to show Canadians how we will manage to balance the budget even as uh, we leave more money in the pockets of Canadians. And on the issue of e-cigarettes, the former Conservative government always supported measures intended to limit uh, young people's uh, desire to take up smoking and we will have an official announcement on that soon. Well, it's uh, someone who's afraid of his record and if I were him I would be too. I note that this evening there is uh, a part of the debate will be focused on foreign affairs and if there's one area where Justin Trudeau's failures have been so visible to Canadians, so evident that Canadians can immediately understand, it's on the subject of foreign affairs. He has uh, clowned around on the world stage. He has backed down to Donald Trump on the NAFTA negotiations, offering concession after concession after concession with nothing to, to gain in return. And of course, he has done nothing since January to stand up for Canadians who are being imprisoned by the Chinese government as the government of China uh, blocks our exports on key areas. So uh, if I were him, I'd be afraid of showing up as well. It's too bad, but I think Canadians will read into, into that a prime minister who's afraid of his own record. <coughs> I know that tonight one of the topics will be foreign affairs, and it's no great uh, surprise that Justin Trudeau is afraid of his own record on foreign affairs, given the way he represents represented Canada on the foreign stage, on the international stage. Obviously, he's afraid of his own record. He hasn't done anything to defend Canadians who are imprisoned, uh, notably by the Chinese government. He's done nothing in nine months. And he's given a lot of concessions to Donald Trump without any gains for Canada. So if I were he, I also would be afraid to be there. But Canadians will see tonight that Justin Trudeau is afraid of his own record. Ms. Wilson, you said that you thought it was shocking that Canada doesn't have an abortion law. And you suggested that there could be legislative ways to deal with that. If you were elected as an MP in this riding, would you introduce legislation? that would affect abortion rights or would you support someone else's legislation that did? Well, we just heard from our leader and I abso absolutely support our leader's position that we are focused on issues that unite Canadians and that's what I'm hearing about at the doors and that's what our party will continue to focus on. Do you believe you would have a free vote under this government on abortion? Well, we are the only party that allows for, we are a big blue tent, we're the only party that allows for for free votes and so I'm grateful that our, our leader will allow free votes on issues of but moral conscience. would conscience. you introduce legislation? I'm, I'm planning to focus on issues that I'm hearing about at the door. I've been knocking on doors for a year and a half in this community. We've been building great momentum. And the issues that I'm hearing about are affordability, security, and Justin Trudeau's repeated scandals and, and corruption. But so. do you still care about this issue? I, I've never hidden behind the fact that I am pro-life. Justin Trudeau said in 2011 he also is pro-life, but our party is focused on issues that unite Canadians. Do you yeah. receive support from the Right Now group uh, with your campaign? Or do they are helping at all? 
So I, I've received support from various people in the community. Actually, we have a very diverse group but of volunteers. Right now, um, I, I have not uh, been in touch with right now. I'm, I'm focused on gaining volunteers and supporters from within York Centre. But we, we have supporters from all across Toronto. We're building strong momentum to win this riding. Thank, Thank you. Guys. Thank you. Thanks very much. You heard Conservative leader Andrew Shearer there in uh, a Toronto riding of York Centre. And uh, with his uh, candidate in that riding, the Conservative candidate is Rachel Wilson. And one of the issues was that uh, she has been and is a pro uh, life uh, candidate and she you heard her you heard reporters asking would you introduce legislation to bring about uh, you know the debate on abortion would you bring that back to the fore and she sidestepped that by saying she's looking to uh, talk about issues that unite Canadians the same message we heard from Andrew Shear and he said we are going to focus on things that unite Canadians he did also talk about a tweet that uh, liberal candidate um, Carolyn Bennett sent out earlier, and I'm going to leave that to CBC's Janice McGregor, who was also listening to this impromptu news conference, if you will. Uh, Janice is in Ottawa. Uh, we'll talk about Carolyn Bennett and the, and the whole uh, sort of, you know, abortion issue and whether it comes to the fore in this, but what stood out for you, Janice? Yeah, well, I mean, maybe useful for our viewers, just for those wondering why this is all of a sudden a thing again today. Uh, of course, over the last couple of weeks, Scheer was uh, forced to answer questions, try to clarify his exact position on this issue. I, uh, you know, just to reiterate, if anyone is still kind of unclear from listening to him, uh, he has said that a future Conservative government under his leadership would take the same approach as it did under Stephen Harper, where it would not be the position of the government to reopen uh, the abortion debate, as they say, or bring forward legislation like that, but that uh, the caucus would not be muzzled or unable to say things or bring forward issues that were important matters of conscience to them. Um, so in, in the face of sort of that, at 8.15 this morning, Carolyn Bennett, a longtime Liberal cabinet minister uh, running again, uh, sent out a tweet uh, featuring a video for Mr. Shear's candidate in York Centre, who you just saw scrumming there. Uh, this video appears to be uh, from a march, a, a protest, uh, I believe 2017, and you hear her talking about uh, being an anti-abortion campaigner, uh, the things she feels that people who have these views need to do uh, to advance this fight. And so Bennett's point was, uh, you know, is it really closed? What signal are you sending? We're on day two of the campaign. Uh, you know, you are going to a riding where your candidate has been very public uh, about her beliefs on this issue. Um, I have to say, uh, you know, you do wonder if the campaign was intent on turning the page, whether this wasn't a risk for them. Uh, the intended topic of this uh, uh, media kind of photo opportunity today uh, had nothing to do with this. It was about uh, a tax credit that they're offering on uh, maternal and uh, paternal benefits that, that parents of, of babies receive. Uh, they could have done this in, in any riding, <laughs> frankly, in the greater Toronto area. Uh, so you do wonder uh, why they did this one. And uh, But anyway, it, it, it has uh, caused them uh, the situation uh, that they found themselves in. The candidate, Rachel Wilson, stepping up, uh, echoing the comments of her leader, um, emphasizing that the Conservative Party that she's running for is the only one uh, that would allow for free vo votes, saying that she was grateful for that. But in the meantime, she intended to focus on the kind of issues she was hearing at the door, uh, which which isn't abortion. So uh, I hope that backstory helps people understand why this came up again. Um, I, you know how the how the Liberals kind of uh, forced them to to have to respond to this. But uh, you see here how the the Conservatives were were once again uh, trying to explain and and uh, get things back onto the sorts of things they want to be able to talk about. And I know you'll be watching as the uh, main party leaders visit various ridings across the country, Janice, and we'll have a, a chance over the course of the next 39 days to see how the message they're getting from the doorstop is playing out in their stump speeches as they continue on. So we'll chat again. That's CBC's Janice McGregor in Ottawa.